I'll give it a few minutes before you go in there. Now, why have we got this caravan here? Well, it's not to use its toilet as a port loo on a chute. It's because I want to do some science. I want to see what fixing a caravan to an electric car does to its energy consumption and therefore its range. In fact, I'm going to fix various things to this Skoda Enyaq. A bike rack, a ski rack. I'm going to fit it with a roof box and we'll see what effect that has on its energy consumption. Now, I'm going to do some other things as well. We're going to drive the car with all the electrics on. What does that do to its range, its efficiency? What does driving the car fully loaded with people do to its efficiency? Now, this may all seem very, very sensible. So to make things a bit more car wow, I'm going to launch this Enyaq with the caravan attached to see how that affects its nautical 60 time because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Anyway, better get to work. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow, your one stop car buying comparison site. Let's start off this efficiency test video with the most important thing, <laughs> launching the Skoda Enyaq. So this particular car has a single motor driving the rear wheels with 204 horsepower and 310 newton meters of torque, especially 0 to 60 in 8.2 seconds. But what is the reality? We're going to find out now with my specialist timing gear up here. I'm going to launch it. Three, two, one, launch. And steady off the line. What's that doing for the efficiency? 0.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Not 60, 7.91. So quicker than Skoda says, I'm going to proceed for the standing quarter mile, see what it is. 16.25. There we go. I've set a baseline performance test in the Enyaq with everything off and nothing attached to it. Now, later in the video, I'm going to launch it with the caravan and see what that does for the launch time. But before that, let, let's actually crack on with the efficiency testing, shall we? I've now moved from the launch area to this test section, which is like a motorway, it's a bowl. I'm going to go around in circles and each lap is two miles. What I'm going to do is run the car for five laps and I'm going to work out the average energy consumption cruising along at 60 miles an hour in this car with all systems off. OK, so here we go. Starting it now. Reset. Let's go. While I clock up the miles, I'm going to talk you through a little bit about this car. The Skoda Enyaq range starts at £35,000. And if you're thinking about buying a Skoda Enyaq or any car for that matter, you need to check out CarWow to see how much you can save on that car. To do that, you can just click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. Alternatively, just Google WOW, me car wow, and you can go straight there and we will wow you. Wow. So. Does the Skoda Enyaq wow me? Well, you can get it with two battery choices. So one is a 60 kilowatt hour battery, but actually the usable capacity is 58 kilowatts. Now that car can do 255 miles on a single charge, according to Skoda. This one is the 80 model and it has a 77 kilowatt hour battery pack. And according to Skoda, it should be able to do 330 miles on a single charge. But this particular car I'm driving is fitted with some options, such as 20 inch alloy wheels, which does reduce the efficiency. And as a result, this very car I've got here, according to Skoda, is supposed to do 380 miles of range on a charge. But I'm going to work out exactly how far it'll go on a single charge if you're cruising at 60 miles an hour constantly on the motorway using the trick computer here because I can get the average energy consumption per mile here. So I just got to drive around and we'll find out exactly what the real world range is at 60 miles an hour, all systems off. That's one mile done. Fortunately for you, we can edit this video to keep it nice and short. For me, this is going to be a very boring day of clocking up loads and loads of miles just driving round and round in circles on this test track. We're coming up for the 10 mile mark. What's the average going to be? Just about to click over to 10 miles. There we go. And the average consumption is three miles per kilowatt hour, which when you multiply that up by the 77 usable kilowatt hours, this car is averaging at 60 miles an hour, systems off 231 miles, bit off the 330 that Skoda claims. Now let's increase the speed to 70 miles an hour, do the same thing again to see what effect that has on the energy consumption. I'm just going to reset the trip again. Now, 70 miles an hour, cruising. Thank God for cruise control. <laughs> At least I don't have to think about that. This car has the cruise control, which is radar guided, so it keeps you a safe distance from the car in front. It's also got lane keeping assist, but it's not the full auto cruise, which will do auto steering as well. You know, so it like bounces you in between the white lines. 
be better if it had the auto steer as well to make my life a bit easier look it will start to veer out of lane and suddenly dart you back into lane in a rather aggressive manner no, I just started off and already it's less efficient at 70. Let's see what's going to happen though over the 10 miles. While I've got to clock up some more miles, there's a good chance for me to explain the charging on this car. So as standard, DC charging on this car is up to 125 kilowatts and then you can go from zero to 80% full in 38 minutes. Also as standard, the AC charging, it's only seven kilowatts. So really, if you want to charge this thing at home using a wall box charger, you're gonna to have to do it overnight because it's gonna take you 13 hours. It's a bit of a shame you can't get it with 11 kilowatt AC charging because then it'd be quicker. All right, we're coming up to the 10 mile mark. There we go, 10 miles, and we're averaging 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour, so 0.4 miles per kilowatt hour less. So if I do the maths, 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour works out to 200 miles range. By running at 70 miles an hour compared to 60 miles an hour, I've basically lost 31 miles of range. Interesting. So the next thing I want to do is see what using all the electrics does to the range. So I'm going to stick at 70 miles an hour and I'm going to put on the lights. Put them on full beam. Let's have the fog lights on as well. There we go. All the fog lights are on. Now I'm also going to put on the climate to maximum heatage. Turn on the heated steering wheel. Right, what's that going to do to our efficiency? Why is it saying eco there? Hi, there we go. I'm not going to run the radio because then you won't be able to hear me talk and we'd have to pay copyright <laughs> for whatever we use. Now, what I'm also going to do is put the windscreen wipers on. I'm going to reset the trip now. Resetting it now. What's this going to do? Cruising at 70. Okay, we're coming up for 10 miles. There we go. 1.9 miles per kilowatt hour with everything running. And when you times that by 77 kilowatt hour usable battery, 146 mile range at 70 miles an hour with everything on. So that's actually reduced the range by like 54 miles by having all the systems on. That is insane. So what I've done now is turned all the systems back off again, but loaded the car with ballast in the form of four blokes. What I'm gonna do is start the trip computer again and see what that does to the car's efficiency. Now the combined weight of these guys, 340 kilos. <laughs> oh, what's he gonna do? Now, this is a good time to talk about the car's practicality and it's a spacious car. So decent headroom in the back by the looks of it. Yeah, they look fine. Knee room, eh, it's all right. And these guys are quite tall. Foot space, looks all right. Cause you've got a flat floor because it's an electric car. There's no like prop shaft going from the front to the back or exhaust system to worry about. Three big blokes in the back at once though. It's not the widest car, so shoulder room looks a little bit tight. Kids would be fine though. And for two adults in the back, plenty of space in this Enyaq. Okay, we're coming up for 10 miles now. And as you can see, it's very steamed up in here. I can barely see where I'm going. I can see enough that I'm still just about safe. Here it is, about to clock over. Come on, 10 miles, 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. So that works out to 192 miles of real world range at this speed with four burly passengers. So it's actually reduced the range by eight miles compared to just being on my own traveling at 70 miles an hour so for eight miles would i give these guys a lift yeah do you know what i would i'm good like that though i would want to put the aircon on so i can actually see where i'm going so let's let's just have that back on come on on that's better it's clearing so i've kicked the guys out of the car and what i've done now is fitted a ski rack with a single set of skis first thing i've noticed <laughs> is the wind noise Cruising along at 70 with this attached, get this awful wind whistle, which is a shame because otherwise this Skoda Enyaq is quiet on a cruise. Not now, that's awful. Anyhow, let's see what it does to the efficiency. So we're coming up for our starting point. I am going to reset the trip now. Here we go, cruising along at 70 with all the systems, heating and all that kind of stuff turned off. Here comes another 10 miles. Maybe to keep myself entertained, I can tell you a bit about the infotainment system on this car. So as standard, you get this big screen. And it, look, you see that? It has like sort of gesture controls. There's quite a lot of information and functions on the screen, but it can be a bit tricky to navigate. And I don't know if you saw this. Look, 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 come on, show me the map. 
It's not the quickest system. Also, I found it to be a bit buggy at times. And when you turn it on, it takes forever to like boot up and be ready for you to use it fully. Another thing that I'm not a big fan of is this digital driver's display. So yeah, it gives you a speedo, but it doesn't give you that much information. You can change the view, but I mean, only by that much. Look, what's the point of that? You can actually get a heads up display on this car, which is good. However, it's an option. In fact, there's quite a lot of options available for this Enyaq and that causes the price to creep up. For instance, this is the mid specification lounge model. I have to say the interior, uh, there's cloth on the dash, the general quality, the seats as well. They're all nice, but if you want the electric driver's seat, it comes as part of a pack, which is just over 400 pounds. If you want that for the passenger electric operation as well, another pack with an extra 400 or so pounds. If you want heated seats, not standard, you have to pay extra for them and they come as part of a pack, which includes tri-zone climate control as well. Once again, over 400 pounds and the cost soon starts to mount up. This car is like 45,000 pounds because it's got 5,000 pounds worth of options on it. And when you think about it, this car is more expensive than a Tesla Model 3. Now I know Tesla Model 3 is a slightly smaller car, but it's actually not that much smaller on the inside. And based on the range tests I've done, the Tesla is more efficient. And you've got the Tesla supercharger network and you get everything as standard, you know, electric seats, electric steering column, cruise control with lane keeping assist, all a standard. It's just better value. Now don't get me wrong, this Enyaq is a very, very good car. And if you're looking at getting an electric SUV, I highly recommend it. In fact, what I've done is gone to the car configurator and configured what I think is the best battery, motor, specification and option pack version of the Enyaq. And if you want to see what it is and the saving you can get on it through CarWow, I've put a link up there. It should be popping out in the top right hand corner of the screen. There's also one in the description of the video. Go there, you can see exactly what the trim level and spec is of this Skoda Enyaq that I prefer and the saving. Anyway, just bear with me while I cock up some more walls. What effect will the ski rack have apart from doing my head in with that whistling sound? Okay, we're coming up for the 10 mile mark now. What is our average gonna be? 10 miles, 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour. Ooh, that's interesting. So that means the range when you account for the fact you've got 77 usable kilowatt hour battery pack on a full charge, looking at 161 miles. So that's reduced from 200 without that ski rack on. That's like 39 miles it's costing you. It's nuts. Right, here we go again. Thankfully though, I've got rid of that ski rack and I've replaced it with a roof box. Now it's more aerodynamic and it creates less noise. I can still hear some wind noise off that roof box, but it's nowhere near as bad. So that should mean that the efficiency isn't reduced by as much as when I had the ski rack on, but we'll find out. I set the cruise to 70 miles an hour. I am going to reset the trick computer now. <sighs> 10 more miles. Actually, do you know what I think? This Enyaq is actually a good looking car to begin with and the roof box adds to that sort of SUV sporty lifestyle look. That looks matter if you buy an SUV, right? Okay, we're coming up to the 10 mile mark now. What's the average efficiency gonna be? Here's 10 miles now. So averaging 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour with the roof box on. So that works out to a range on a full battery, 177 miles. So that's cost 23 miles compared to not having the roof box attached. So not terrible, but not awesome either. Still, it's way better than the ski rack, isn't it? I'd definitely have this rather than the ski rack, put the skis inside this box, just more efficient and less noisy. Anyway, let's try something else. Now I've swapped out the roof box for a roof mounted bike rack with one adult bike attached to it. Let's see what that does for the efficiency. I'm just gonna reset the trip computer and now I'm gonna do 10 miles again. Do you know what? I thought it'd be noisier with the bike on the top. I think it's a little bit better than with the roof box to tell you the truth, but will it be better in terms of efficiency? Does less noise mean less drag and therefore improved efficiency? We're gonna find out. Now I could, in theory, be carrying the bike inside the car if I folded down the back seats. But if you've got rear passengers, you don't want to fold down those back seats. Would I be able to fit it in the boot? Well, if you can detach the front and rear wheels, then you probably would because the boot capacity on this car is 585 litres, which is pretty decent. So if you compare that to the sister car to this, which is based on the same platform, the VW ID4, that has a boot capacity of 545 litres, 40 litres less. If you compare it to something like 
a Hyundai Ioniq 5. That has a boot capacity of 527 litres, almost 60 litres less. Thing to note though, the boot capacity on what I would consider is the internal combustion engine version of this car, the Skoda Kodiak. And if you have the seven seater version, which most people do have, that's bigger. But still, 585 litres, that's gonna be enough for most people. We are coming up to the 10 mile mark now. What's the range gonna be? I think I've got a sneeze coming on. Can I hold it in? So here we go. 10 miles of range, averaging 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour. So that would work out to a range of 169 miles in total if you've got a roof mounted bike rack on with one bike. So that is 31 miles less than without the bike rack. And it's slightly less than with the roof box. So a roof box is better than a bike rack or less bad, should it be? All right, and we come to the final thing we want to test, and that is towing a caravan. Now, what you need to know about is the tow capacity of this vehicle. So this one that I've got here, rear wheel drive, 80 model, maximum towing capacity is 1000 kilos. That's why I'm only towing a two berth caravan. This Bailey D42 weighs in at just under 900 kilos, so it does the job. Now, if you want to find out more about Bailey of Bristol and their caravans, there's a link in the description below. Thank you to them for lending us this caravan, by the way. Never towed a caravan before. I may damage it. Why well, not do this when I launch it in a bit? It definitely feels more laboured, this car does. Obviously, you've got the weight of the caravan they're having to pull, and you've also got the added drag of it as well. Now, I've got to drive at 60 miles an hour, not 70, like I've been in for most of the test, and that's because it's a legal requirement that you can't go over 60 miles an hour when towing a caravan in the UK. Probably similar for a lot of other countries as well. So let's see what happens when we're towing it at 60 miles an hour. And of course, I'm gonna compare that figure to what I did before without anything attached to the car. So at 60 miles an hour, we average three miles per kilowatt, which is 231 miles. Anyway, here's the starting point. Let's reset the trip. And just as that happened, I had a warning sign saying, please recharge the vehicle because we have got through our charge very, very quickly today by doing all these tests. But I've got 10 more miles to go. Let's see what happens. Now, if I had the four wheel drive version of this Enyaq, I would be able to tow up to 1,200 kilograms. However, if I had a Skoda Kodiak, that'd be able to tow two tons. EV is no good, right? Well, not necessarily so, because some EVs can tow more than this. For instance, Tesla Model Y, that'll tow up to 1,600 kilos, and a BMW iX, that will tow up to 2,500 kilos. So not bad, but the iX is quite a lot more expensive than this. You probably noticed that I've got these extra appendages fitted to the door mirrors of the Enyaq, and you need to fit those if you're towing a caravan so you can see what's happening when you're turning around corners. Now, if you want to find out more about towing and towing caravans with EVs, we've actually created a dedicated page for it on carwide.co.uk. If you click on the pop-out banner up there, I'll follow the link in the description below. You can go check it out. All the information you need is there, and we've compiled it with the help of the Caravan and Motor Home Club. So it's all pucker information. Oh my God, we're only halfway through the test at five miles and we've only got 26 miles of range remaining. It was like over 40 before I started. It's absolutely chomping through the battery. I think if you want to tow regularly, you ain't going to want an electric car. Not now, maybe in the future, but this is not ideal. I hope I'm going to have enough battery left to do the launch, whatever happens I'm doing the launch. Because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Interestingly, I've got the cruise control set at 60 and it's just constantly doing 59, just one mile less. Is that because it's struggling to tow this caravan? Oh, I don't know. We are finally coming up to 10 miles with the caravan attached and the travel assistant is currently unavailable. Anyway, what's he gonna say? 10 miles, clocked over, averaging 1.3 miles per kilowatt hour. I did the maths based on the fact that this car has a usable battery capacity of 77 kilowatt hours. With a caravan attached, this car's range is just 100 miles. That's less than half it was doing at 60 miles an hour with no caravan attached, that's just nuts. Now, if you want to see all the different figures for all the different things we fit to this car and done with the car, what I'm going to do is put a screen up and all you have to do is pause the video and you can look at all the different comparisons, okay? So pause your video now. Now, 
Now I know that doing similar things with an internal combustion engine car would reduce its efficiency. However, the fact of the matter is that electric cars, the major concern for a lot of people is the range. And the range that you can go with electric cars on a single charge is less than most internal combustion engine cars can do with a full tank of fuel. So the range really does matter. I've just noticed as well when I was driving along that one of these wing mirrors fell off. I didn't spot it earlier. Shows how observant I am. <laughs> and look, it's telling me now, please charge your vehicle. You can search for a charging station nearby. Well, I would do, but first, I'm gonna launch this car with a caravan attached. Right, now the most important question of the day, how does fitting a caravan to a Skoda Enyaq affect its 0 to 60 time? Well, let's launch it, here we go. Three, two, one. Come on! It's still delivering 0.6 miles per kilowatt hour, so it's still giving it full power despite just having 8% of battery left. And here comes the 60. 13.7 seconds instead of the 7.91. What's the quarter mile? 19.6. Just wondering if it was safe to go that fast with a caravan attached, but I wasn't going that fast because it was so slow to 60 in the first place. Now that was the question that you most wanted answered today, wasn't it? Not about the efficiency and all of that. It was how quick the car would be when you launch it with a caravan. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. Let me know whether you consider buying an EV in the comments below. There's a pinned comment for that. Click on those windows there for some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you get a car wow if you're selling your car because you can just upload some photos, brief description, and our dealers will bid on your car. Make sure you get a fair price for it. There's also a link in the description.